After the Second Battle of Kosovo, a temporary silence followed the Ottoman European conflict. However, that quickly changed with the death of Sultan Murad II in 1451. His son, Mehmed II, followed his father on the Ottoman throne, who was rightfully nicknamed as Mehmed the Conqueror by the later ages. His reign marked the greatest and most successful era of Ottoman expansion, which was soon felt throughout Europe. On the 29th of May 1453, the walls of Constantinople were breached, and the Byzantine Empire, thought to be everlasting, fell to the crescent banners. But this was just the beginning. Mehmed sought to be the inheritor of the Roman Empire, and he had his sights set on the old continent. With the Balkans under his control, he advanced northward, conquering Serbia with ease by 1455. His next target was Belgrade, the southern gate of Hungary, and with that, the key to Europe. Although the war preparations began as early as 1453, the royal houses of Europe failed to send their armies against the invaders. However, thanks to the preachings of the Franciscan order, a large crusading army gathered by Vienna, made up mostly by German and Bohemian peasants. However, they never get to fight Mehmed's army. This responsibility rested on the shoulders of John Hunyadi and the 70 years old Franciscan monk called Giovanni the Capastrano and the dozens of valiant Hungarian and Serbian serfs willing to die for their homeland. Mehmed arrived in their Belgrade at the end of June 1456. The court knew about his plans for nearly two months, but failed to take any countermeasures. King Ladislaus ordered the recruitment of troops, but neither the nobility, nor the church, nor the barons mobilized their armies. Only Hunyadi and a few of his supporters rode out to save the city. From their army, Hunyadi sent 7,000 soldiers into the castle, which was defended by his brother-in-law, Michael Siladi, while he took positions nearby. Meanwhile, Capestrano gathered thousands of peasants, fueled by the determination to save the country, their families and their faith. Thanks to his efforts, 20 to 30,000 patriots greeted Mehmed's army of nearly 70,000. The Sultan started the siege on the 4th of July. His primary objective was the destruction of the walls, a task he entrusted to his artillery, which already proved itself under Constantinople. Seven huge siege cannons, 27 cannons, and around 300 smaller howitzers unleashed a fire upon the walls while the rest of his army partially surrounded the city. The war machines were roaring day and night, and their terrible thunder was heard all the way to Saget. They spewed smoke, so the sunny, clear sky was covered with a thick cloud of fog, and the gentle breeze was mixed with the stench of sulfur. To prevent reinforcements, Mehmed brought a fleet of 200 vessels, chained them together, and blockaded the Danube. Hunyadi, however, was able to hold control over the northern side of the river and started to gather and repair all the ships of the southern lands. Ten days later, on the 14th of July, the Hungarian fleet charged into the blockade and broke them into splinters, creating the connection between their reinforcements and the fortress. This was a crucial moment, since the walls were no more than ruins by this point, leaving the defenders open to the attackers. The thundering sound of the cannons faded away, and the deafening silence only meant one thing, the Ottoman charge was now only a matter of time. Mehmed waited until the 21st of July to deploy his infantry, but once he did, he forced Siladi back within the walls just in a few hours. Hunyadi, who relocated himself to the citadel, opened the gates and charged at the intruders with his knights. The clashes lasted throughout the day, and the enemy even came close to capturing the citadel itself, but the Ottomans were forced out of the city by the morning during a constant back and forth combat. Reflecting on the losses and having learned from his previous mistakes, Hunyadi kept the defensive positions and forbade his army from pursuing the retreaters. Even so, some fiery spirited soldiers rushed out of the castle and, thanks to their recklessness, found themselves in the clutches of the Ottomans. Capastrano, who was stationed at the other bank of the Sava River, saw the Christians in need and headed out to save them. His action surprised everyone. 
Hunyadi gave an explicit order that no one could start an offensive without his personal permission. But Mehmed was in a similar confusion because of the bold Christians who have already taken the hill on his left. To save his cavalry, caught in the crossfire, he sent a Rumelian corps to their aid. But this was a serious mistake, for he left his cannons unprotected. Hunyadi seized the opportunity and rode out to support the crusaders. He stormed out the castle, destroyed the Ottoman artillery, then aimed his own at the enemy. The counter didn't stop there. In fact, he was just getting started. He quickly reorganized the knights and carried out a devastating charge to the encircled Sipahis. Although the Sultan's right was still untouched by the battle, he had to realize that he cannot finish the siege with rapidly withering reserves and without his artillery. Thus, on the 22nd of July, Mehmed broke camp and fled back to Constantinople.